Hello, today I will present a part of my master's degree on graffiti removal from a mural. The mural in question was painted in 2015 by Croatian artist Oko, Marina Messer, with the help of street artist Chez. The mural is located at the west wall of the plateau of the Museum of Contemporary Art in Zagreb. The MSU from its move in 2009 strives to connect and communicate with the general public and the mural is just one of the artworks exhibited in the open. Shortly after the mural was completed, it was vandalized with black spray. Since the message written was of a hateful nature, it was quickly covered by an unknown party. Unfortunately, the graffiti was covered with white paint that diminished the visual perception of the artwork. Apart from that, there are some smaller graffiti and damage on the mural alongside the general dirt. The topic of conservation conservation of street art is still one debated over. There are no strict guidelines to adhere to and every artwork has to be approached differently considering different options. One of the most troubling aspects of street art is the question of ownership alongside the question of ephemerality. Ron English street artist said, I don't believe street art is meant to be permanent. If the owner of the building wants it down, if someone paints over it to paint something new, it's all fine because it's fulfilled its purpose. Street art is an experience, then it's a photo, a you are not here moment. Can be, this view of street art be adapted in this case where the mural is part of the exhibition? And what kind of action can we take to still respect artists' wishes? So before any treatment, it is advised to ask the five Ws, who, what, where, why, and when. Who created the mural? a creation artist with international fame, Oko. Her opinion on conservation should be taken into consideration and can be most helpful. She herself said that she wished for the overpainting to be removed and that she would like to be updated during the whole process. What is the mural? A link between the public and the museum, a path of communication, not to mention a part of the MSU's exhibition in the open. Also, a statement by the museum that gives importance to the street art, making it a part of contemporary art. Where is the mural located? As stated, the mural is a part of the MSU's building. Thereby, the mural is representing of the museum itself. The degrading overpainting is in conflict with how the museum is treating artworks. Why was it created? The mural, as the artist herself states, refers to the power of widening individual horizons. It questions what lurks beneath the surface, what it is we are eagerly trying to avoid. The overpainting is obstructing the mural from conveying this message. And when was it created? In 2015, as a part of the project to connect the MSU with the general public and its visitors, as well as a part of the project to present street art as a form of contemporary art. When taking all of these answers in consideration, it is clear that the graffiti and the overpainting is diminishing the value of the mural and is, it is in the best interest of all involved parties for it to be removed. The par parties involved include the artist herself, the museum as the legal owner, and the public as the benefactors of the piece. But it is important to state that smaller visual uh, imperfections such as delamination of the paint are not disruptive and they're a natural part of the mural's life. The artist uh, has stated that she would not want to hide the natural ephemerality of her artwork. In conclusion, the graffiti and the white overpaint are a disturbance and have to be dealt with in a way. Now, a simple solution would be to cover the overpainting with the imitation of the original. There is a strong case against it. Sure, covering the overpaint is simple, cheap and quick, but it only opens additional troubles. The newly formed thick areas created by painting over the graffiti and white cover-up will always stand out. Not to mention the white, the paint will react differently than the original paint, uh, which has been exposed to sun, rain, and pollutants. All that can encourage even more vandalism. There is also a question of professional ethics. So the graffiti has to be removed. First step is to understand the painting process and the materials used. The paint was sampled from the wall and FTIR analysis was made, really revealing paint for acrylic. Later in the museum's archive, email correspondence was found in which Oko, 
order the paint needed to, for the mural. Not only did this information provide the manufacturer and product use, chromos, Seattle wet and tone paint for concrete walls, but exact tones and shades used. Apart from that, on the artist's Instagram and Facebook page, there was a photo of her holding Montana black sprays. These paints are made with organic solvent, nitrocellulose, and alkyl resin, all information found in technical data sheet. The white overpaint and the black graffiti were sampled for FTIR analysis. Unfortunately, and as is expected, all paints, original and overpaint, had a similar composition. White paint is a generic acrylic paint with calcium carbonate filling, and black graffiti paint had a synthetic acrylic binder. Since uh, the outdoor acrylic paint and sprays are very resistant to mechanical damage, they required chemical removal methods. Laser and dry ice removal methods were considered prior to chemical cleaning, but due to inaccessibility in the case of the former and inefficiency in the case of the latter, these methods were excluded. To better control chemicals being applied and to prolong the active period, it was decided to use gels. Uh, to test appropriate cleaning methods, three mock-ups were made. The original painting layer was imitated using the original colors on concrete slabs. Each of the mock-ups was then painted over to imitate one of the situations found in the mural. Painting layer covered with black spray, white acrylic paint, and both black spray and white paint. Different types of gels were used, Santan gel, Carbopol Easy, and C9341, Galanocalco gel, and Nevic gel. They were combined with organic solvents, acetone, ethanol, shosol tea, and benzyl alcohol in different ratios. Tests were made in the MSU's conservation department. Here are the mock-ups mock after tests. Gels that require mechanical action to be effective, such as Santan and Carbopol Easy, cause the paint to dissolve and mix with the overpainting, and were excluded as a possibility. Water-based gels, such as Carbopol C9341 and Galanocalco gel, did not show any dissolving action, probably due to the hydrophobic nature of the paint. The gel that worked great was Nevex. Although it is water-based, the addition of benzyl alcohol dissolved both the white and the black paint. Since two Nevex gels with ethanol and benzyl alcohol and just benzyl alcohol proved to have a good effect on the mock-ups, both were tested on site. Nevex gel with benzyl alcohol proved to be better. Additional removal of the black paint was required in the places where it was underneath the white paint. It was simply removed uh, with a cotton swab and ethanol. A simple method was established. Mechanical thinning of the thick white overpaint, application of the emulsion of the Nevex gel and 30% benzyl alcohol, removal of the dissolved overpaint, and the removal of the black paint with ethanol were needed. But a new problem opened. During the cleaning process, the graffiti became more visible. Visibility of the graffiti during the whole removal process could caused additional vandalism to the wall. So it was decided to retouch those areas before further cleaning so that the whole message is not visible. Before retouching, the whole mural was washed with high pressure washers so that the colors could be properly matched. Retouching on monochromatic surfaces can be quite challenging. To achieve a uniform surface, micro airbrush was used. As stated before, the original paints were known that meant that the same paint could be used for retouching, only slightly adjusted to match the colors of the original. Micro airbrush allowed for the paint to be distributed in multiple fine layers without any edges. Not all col colors could be mixed using only pre-mixed paint, especially areas painted with white with sprays. To add saturation and adjust the color, swing color paints for toning were used. Here you can see the results on the right part of the mu mural and on the left. It is impossible to fully prevent any future vandalism, but what can be done is to protect the surface, making the graffiti removal simpler and less damaging to the original paint. Therefore, the last step is to cover the mural with anti-graffiti coating. The ideal coating 
should protect the mural without changing any, any of the properties, such as shine, color, vapor permeability, etc. Multiple different types of coatings are available, water and solvent based. In consideration and available in Croatia are row fixes PP409, M8, Pasodex, Phenol, and Archild 1. Coatings such as PP409, which are solvent based, were ruled out in fear of the solvent damaging the paint. Coatings such as M8, which require annual reapplying, applying, were also ruled out. Uh, that left water-based coatings such as Fasadex, Spinal, and Archild 1. These coatings need partial reapplying on the areas where the graffiti was removed. Before deciding on the product, test areas have to be made so that the properties of the coatings can be observed. In conclusion, a street art is going mainstream all over the world, world and we as conservators have to include it in our practice. It is still a new and unexplored part of our profession. Proper treatment and care for street art can prevent for future vandalism and degradation. Street art and most of contemporary art is not eternal. It is important to remember that murals and other forms of street art have their own life. Before we end, I would like to mention what an amazing opportunity I had to discuss the treatment of the artwork with the artist herself. It is often an overlooked part of the contemporary art conservation. Understanding the artist's idea and intent helped me a lot and her positive feedback gave an extra layer to the whole process. Thank you for your time and attention. If you have any questions or would like to see more data, do not hesitate to contact me.